And as you're settling into the space where you are, I would invite you just to let your eyes close. And let's just take a few breaths, each of us on our own, and really arrive into the space where you are. Whether it is the familiar space that you show up, you find stillness, you pause. Maybe you're in a new space, a different space today. But just take these few breaths and just truly settle. Just notice how the body feels. Try to make yourself as comfortable physically as you can, which will be the invitation to become comfortable mentally, comfortable emotionally, and then eventually comfortable with the totality of you. And so let's just start to breathe together now as we've each settled individually, collectively. Let's take a long, slow breath in. And a full breath out. A slow breath in. And a full breath out. Breathing in. And breathing out. And you can either maintain that rhythm of breath for yourself or you can switch to something that feels a little more right for you. But remember, comfort is the key. The physical comfort invites the mental comfort, which then invites the emotional comfort. And so as we pause together for these few minutes today, wherever we each are, wherever our space is, I wanna keep us focused on this concept of gratitude, not because it's November or because there's a designated calendar event that's occurring that's connected to gratitude but rather I want to stay with this theme or this idea of gratitude because it will change us from the inside out before we get into our practice and our guidance for tonight I just want to tell you that there is science there's research behind having a gratitude practice the same way that there is science and there's research behind our meditation practice there's enough people in enough important places studying these things, which then validates what we already know to be true. Having a spirit of gratitude will shift how we view what's going on in life. There's an amazing poem by Melody Beatty that I've quoted many times before, but she talks about how gratitude turns what we have into just enough. She goes on to say that it can truly help us to make sense of our past. It can help us to truly find peace in our present. And it can help us to find clarity for tomorrow and the days to come. But the part of our gratitude that I really want to settle in with us today is gratitude for the parts that we don't always look forward to parts that sometimes we just want to avoid because when things are going well it's so natural to feel grateful when things are going the way that we anticipated or that we hoped they would it is so natural to experience gratitude and appreciation when we look around and we feel like we have what we need and for some of us, even sometimes what we want, we feel like the path has been cleared just a little bit. And again, it's so natural in those times to feel grateful. But I want us to pause here today, in these few minutes that we have, and see if we can begin to nurture and cultivate gratitude for the parts that we often avoid. Gratitude for the challenges that we are each facing right now today. Gratitude for the people in our life and in our path 
that we often assign blame to for, for frustrating us, for making us feel a certain way. But let's see in these few minutes that we have if we can foster this idea of gratitude that Melody Beatty talks about when she says gratitude. Oh, it can shift. It can help us to see the fullness of life. So let's use that idea with the challenges. And so I would invite each of us just to reflect for just a few breaths. And what are the challenges that you're facing right now? Maybe they're relational. Maybe they're connected to your health. Maybe it's about your finances, your physical abilities, the grief, the pain. I could go on and on with all the examples, but let's just each pause. We won't pause long because these things seem really easy to think of because oftentimes they feel like they just sit right in the front of our minds. So just pick one or two things that you know right now are causing you worry or anxiety or frustration or sorrow. What are the challenges we each have? And then I'd like to guide us for these next just couple of minutes together and then we'll all just sit in the space, breathing, being. But I'd like to guide us just through some reframing. It doesn't discount what these things have done and caused to our emotions, to our thoughts, because those things are real and we are human. But as you begin to cultivate a gratitude practice, even for the things that are challenging, it will create a pattern interrupt to how you deal with the challenges. Instead of dealing with them through avoidance or anger or a little bit of self-pity, you'll be able to go back to that quote she said, gratitude helps us to experience the fullness of life all the parts, the suffering, the celebrations. And so let's go back to that breath. Again, just a slow breath in and a full breath out. Just keep, even though we pause, we thought about this challenge, keep that breath going. Slow breath in, full breath out. And with that challenge in mind, I'd like us to reframe it with the idea that usually challenges come and they're unexpected. And we look up and we think, why now? Why now? But what if we could think that the timing of our challenges was just the right time? They are inconvenient. They are not things that we plan for. And they're not things that we want. But what if we could look upon them and think, this timing is just right. I don't understand why. I don't really know what my next steps or my next things to do are. But I want to embrace this challenge with the idea, it has arrived in my life at the right time. So let me just leave you with that for just the next few breaths and see if that's something that you could reconcile up in your head and in your heart. This challenge or these couple challenges you thought of have arrived at the right time. And then the second way I want us to try to reframe this, and 
And I know we talk about challenges and suffering and that there's got to be a lesson in there. But rather than just thinking about what the lesson is or what the teaching is, think about where you are on this spiritual journey, this path through your meditation practice. You may have started meditation as a way to reduce your stress or to be a little more connected to the present. But what you find along the way, whether you've done this for days or months or years, is it does inform your path toward transcendence, toward transformation, toward this thing that many people like to call the spiritual awakening, this deeper connection to your source, to the spiritual parts of you. And so instead of just thinking with a frown on our face and our arms crossed that there must be a lesson in this challenge, what if we looked upon the challenge and thought, there's something on my path of spiritual awakening, of connection to source that can only happen through this challenge. There's something on this path, this growth, this development that we're each on that could only happen with this challenge. And it doesn't mean that if you can reframe it and you can think of it that way, that you'll automatically get an answer about the why. Because you know in our meditation practice, we're not here to seek answers. We're just asking the questions and being open to whatever's revealed. So as we sit together and we just pause, and we'll let the space between us just be. But keep these two ideas of reframing up in your mind of, what if this challenge has arrived at just the right time? And what if there are things on my spiritual path of growth that I could not experience without this challenge? It doesn't mean we're going to reconcile and we're going to embrace it by the time these few minutes are over. But perhaps we can just turn our perspective just a little bit. So again, slow breath in and full breath out. Slow breath in and a full breath out. And now let's just sit and be and be open to whatever is revealed to each of us in this time. And as you continue to breathe and continue to be in your space, mentally, physically, emotionally, I hope that we can each figure out a way to take these two ways of reframing it and walk our path this week. Walk our path where there is joy and celebration and walk our path where there are challenges. 
one way that I plan to do that is my husband and I have had a gratitude journal for the last couple years. And almost without fail, the last thing we do before we say goodnight is we each say our one thing for the day. And I write them in the journal next to my name, next to his. We put the journal to the side and we go to sleep. Sometimes our gratitude is the same. Sometimes they're so very different. But almost always they're about things that really touch our heart, that we can pause from that day and think, oh, that's the thing. But I wanna try this week to write down for myself each, each night the challenge that I'm going through, the thing that's causing me to pause, the thing I need to reframe. And so maybe not just the reframing in my meditation practice, but the actual physical act of writing down that thing in our journal will represent my connection to it in a healthy growth type of way. Instead of feeling like it's an interruption to my path and my development, I want to see it as just continuing to light that fire along the way. And for you, it may look very different, but I would encourage you, sit with your challenge this week. There's a quote from the Buddha that talks about learning to sit with our suffering. And just about every faith system and belief system has their own version of how they say that, but we have to learn just to be with our challenge. Befriend it. See what its purpose is in your life today and during the days that you're walking with it. Gratitude will help us to see the fullness of life. It will reframe how we see our past. It will reframe how we see our present. And perhaps most beautifully, it will reframe how we see tomorrow. Namaste.